Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today um, we're looking at a recently acquired camera and as you can see the case is in pretty good condition. It's a Yashica. Uh, these are one of my favourite rangefinder cameras. I've got quite a few of these because they're so affordable. And this is the, uh, I'll take it out of the case. It's an Electro 35, but which variation? Of the 35 is it? I've shown you a GT so far. The GT is the uh, the all black version. As you can see this is black and chrome. Let me put on some illumination. It's another gloomy day in, in paradise. That's a bit better, isn't it? Uh, this is an Electro 35 and this is a GSM. So the earlier version, well, the original version was just the Electro 35. I do have one of those to show you as well as, as well at some point. There's a GT and a GS, which were the early versions. They can be identified by having a cold shoe and a more limited range on the ASA dial. As you can see on this one, it goes up to a thousand on the ASA dial. Uh, but the main difference is you can still got the cover on it, which is quite nice. Oh, you can see that hasn't been on and off very often, but you can see this one has a hot shoe. Whereas the ones without the M have a cold shoe. So it's quite nice that it's got the original cover as well, but we will take that off. It's got the original um, EverReady case. It's got an original Yashica um, cap. You can see he's had a bit of a punch in the nose. So that will need to be straightened out there, otherwise you might be able to get any filters on it. But yeah, the GS versions are the chrome versions. The GT versions are the all black versions. And this one has the standard 1.7 lens. So for the, the speed of the lens, they're still quite affordable. They are heavy. They are all metal. They are chunky. Um, you can see this one's been dropped on its nose. And that's the only bit of damage it's done. And uh, it's not too much of a problem. Leaf shuttered, range finder. So proper focusing cameras. And uh, yeah, I really do like these. I have a soft spot for them. So just give you a quick overview of the wind on on this side um, a lockable shutter release button as you can see this one is stuck in the down position so the camera is a, a non-runner at the moment um, ASA dial under and over exposure warning these are aperture priorities so you set them on auto you have a choice of apertures which is set on this dial here and um, it will choose the shutter speed being a leaf shutter, it's limited at 500th of a second, um, but the uh, the long exposures can be several seconds. You also have a B mode, which leaves the shutter open as long as you hold the button down. And it also has a flash sync speed as well on here. I'm not quite sure why, because a leaf shutter should synchronise at all speeds. Hot shoe rather than a cold shoe. Standard rewind crank viewfinder. And it is a range, proper range finder, so as you move the focusing, um, you line up the two images in the range finder, pretty simple. We have a battery test. Uh, this has got a battery in it. You can see that the, where the frame counter is, it lights up. I've cut my nails, there we go. So you can see that that's lighting up in there, the cameras. Can't figure out the exposure, but yeah, there's a frame counter with the back side. It's very bright. It's almost like a torch. On the bottom, push to rewind the film. Tripod bush in the middle of the lens. Very nice in the battery compartment. To open the back. Same on all of them. Pull it up to open the back up. See what the condition's like in here. It looks very nice, actually. It's in very nice condition. Pressure plate. Uh, take up small, multi-slotted, nice and easy, sprocket drive. Now you can see the back of the lens. If I adjust the uh, the aperture, you can see that opening up. I say it's a 1.7, so it's pretty fast actually. When it's open, and it's closing down again. Uh, guide rails for the film, they look immaculate. It looks like it's hardly been used, to be honest. This is where the film goes. So yeah, it's in very nice condition actually, but it has a number of issues, being the filter thread on the front being damaged, and more importantly, this uh, 
shot of the least button is stuck in the down position. Turn it upside down, it will pop back, that's where it should be. But there's no resistance when you push it down at all. It just flops about. So we need to take the top cover off and have a look and see what's going on underneath there. So I'll gather some tools together and then we'll come back. Okay, so first things first, because it has a battery in it, we need to take the battery out. So you just need a small coin. Unscrew this at the bottom. That will drop off. I'm using an adapter in this one. You can see inside that it's fairly clean in there. There's no, there's no gunk. It's not had a leaking battery in it. Which is quite nice, but yeah, I just use the original batteries. You can use this as a replacement. So take that out, then we've got no danger of electrics being shorted out or anything. And you can see this is the plus side, it goes against the cover. So just put that to one side. Let's get the top cover off. We're going to remove this part, this part, and this part. And then we're going to undo, I think it's three screws on these, there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there, and hopefully that's all that we're going to need. So to take that part you use a lens spanner, a very simple tool with the pointy ends on it. Hopefully it'll get close enough that we can, uh, we can get this in without scratching the, the metal surface. <laughs> this one won't fit. That's the trouble with these sort of tools. It's not, uh, as you can see, it's uh, it doesn't go small enough to get that to move. So I'm going to have to cheat a little bit there. Right, so actually, the, the lens tool is a little bit too big for that. So I had to use some tweezers, and uh, that will just unscrew off the top so once it's loose enough you can just take it off with your fingers and then remember how everything goes back together so that's that top part then there's this little washer that sits underneath so that can come off and then we've got the rewind on the film advance on its own and then we've got another bigger shim underneath so that's as far as we need to go to get that part off I believe this part can just stay on so now we need to tackle the uh, ASA dial so just hold the ASA dial in place and that will unscrew and again lift off the pieces in order, and that's that part, and I do have somewhere my plastic, very useful little bit of things like a little plastic scraper here, doesn't damage the bodywork then, so this part comes off, so that's next, so obviously this area is clear, then we have to get this out and then normally with these you wind them in the opposite direction to unscrew them so you have to lock this to stop it from moving inside and I say we're gonna wind it the opposite direction that part will come off and there's another washer underneath that let me gently lift that out of the way. Okay, well, that's uh, three sections from the top part removed. Don't need the, don't need the lens tool for that anymore. Okay, so there we've removed the uh, film advance, we've moved the ASA dial. And we've removed the rewind crank. So now we're looking for a screwdriver to undo these three screws on the top. So. Okay, so we 
take out these screws. Oop. That one's gone on the floor. Should find it once I've taken these other two out. That one's wanting to run away as well. So let's just get a little way of containing them so they don't run away. There's another one on this end down here as well. Just unscrew that. Try to catch it down. Very, very small. top cover will come off but on these earlier versions uh, these later versions sorry you got the flash connection cable and there's a bit of a blackout screen there as well at the top of that so that gets us access into there now so we're also going to be looking underneath the uh, the bottom cover and that's just held on by a couple of screws here um, these cameras are known as having a a thing called a pad of death. Um, it's not quite as bad as it sounds. It is repairable, but there's a little pad, and if it doesn't make the correct contact, um, these cameras, when you wind them on, you should get a clunk. Everybody thinks that's a bad thing. Um, it's a bad thing if you don't have a clunk, which this one doesn't when you wind it on, although you can't fire the shutter. So I'm suspecting pad of death is one of the issues that we've got. I'm also wondering about the shutter release and whether that's related to the pad of death problem as well. So with those out of the way, the bottom will come off. There's a little black screw fell out of there just as I took that cover off, this little black screw. So I'm a bit wondering where that came from. The pad of death is related to some of these parts down here. And it basically acts as a spacer and over time it gets worn. And it gives you issues with the metering not working properly. And also you don't you don't get the clunk. So with these cameras always check that you get the wind on clunk. If I can I'll dig out a proper one that does work and demonstrate the clunk. There's a load of videos on the internet on YouTube about this. It's a known issue with these cameras. While we've got the top cover off, we could also clean out the uh, the viewfinder and the rangefinder uh, very delicately with some distilled water on a cotton bud and an air blower just to remove any dirt. This viewfinder is actually very clear on this one. Okay, moving on. I've, uh, I've kind of reassembled the, uh, the film advance here so we can wind the film on relatively easily I can wind on there's no film in it and um, if I show you the bottom of the camera down here and what do I do with the torch there's the torch um, looking at the bottom here you will see the arrangement this is where the clunk comes from is from uh, one of these arms down here. This is your film rewind and as you can see that just pushes it out of the way and that enables this to go backwards. When you advance the uh, the film on that bit drops down. Uh, it is wound on already. Um, you can see this is in, back in the up position. It's not down as far as it was. So all I have to do with this camera is apply a bit of brute force to this part here which is the shutter button as you remember this is stuck down this is the bit that you're actually pushing down and there you hear the shutter there's no battery so with no battery you only get a five hundredth of a second and when the shutter is fired you will see that this one here is in the down position now when you wind on you hear that click 
that's the click that you want to be hearing. Fire the shutter again. When I wind on it, it should click. Hear the click. That's not a problem. It's a problem if you don't hear the click. And again. click so it's quite a good way to test the cameras if you don't hear the click then it has the dreaded pad of death um, it is a job you can do yourself if you've got a lot of patience I wouldn't advise removing the lens which is what a lot of them do um, it's possible to replace the pad of death um, without removing the lens assembly but on this camera I'm not really going to bother to do that so just a bit of reassembly required so We'll put the bottom on and screw that up okay welcome back again so i put the bottom plate on and the shutter is cocked now and i've also installed the battery um, this small red button that fell out of it you can focus on that in my hand this is the battery test and what it does is it pushes against this, this metal rod here and illuminates the uh, the battery check LED so we can see we've got power that has to sit back in the top housing when it goes on but I wanted to check the metering because the the pad of death can affect the metering of these cameras and uh, if I push partly down you can see that we've got one lamp but it's kind of flashing it not particularly accurate this is wide open, I don't know whether this is giving us an exposure. The exposure time on these can be quite long. And I'm having to sort of manually mess about with this to line it up for the wind on. That's on the wrong way around, I think. There's sort of four different ways that this can go on. Not all of them are correct. Uh, that one isn't correct either. I think it's got to go the other way around. Well, it's a good idea to video or take photographs if you're going to attempt this sort of stuff. So you can see how things go back together. Okay, so we've got one light that works, but not very effectively. That makes me suspect that the pad of death, this is the uh, the ISO dial, so if I, I guess this is increasing the ISO and then the other light comes on. So that is our under and over exposure, that's F16. Even that one's flapping about a bit, so I think it might well be worth doing the pad. might well worth be doing the pad of death. As I said if you want to clean the, uh, this is the viewfinder, you can clean the inside of here. Um, take particular care with the this mirror here because it's a semi-mirrored thing, I wouldn't really touch that. Um, just use a blower, a rocket blower or whatever kind of blower that you have handy. Just to clear any dust that happens to be lurking in there. And there's a little metal cover that goes over the top of that, which is that piece of metal which is uh, black on one side and sort of silver on the other. The black side goes on the inside. You can see it's got a little cutout there. And there's also this, uh, this little piece of foam just to block light out from the, the rangefinder as well. And then if you take that part off, you're then ready to put the top back on. That's nice and clean. So then, I'll say the pad of death we'll do in another video. And without moving that too much, he says with his clumsy big fingers, sausage fingers, that 
sort of sits around there. You could could renew that and I'll do that when I go in and do the pad of death because the top will have to come off. You can see it's just falling apart. So I might just leave that out. That's had it. That sits on there. Straight out of the way. And the top cover goes back on. Nicely lined up. Forgot the little red button that I was telling everyone about. That can be a bit fiddly to get in, that has to sit into there. So that has to sit into there. One little tip if you've got things that aren't really magnetic, or if you've not got any magnetic screwdrivers, a little bit of spit does quite a good job of. holding things in place until you actually get it where you want it to be. That little bit of metal is a pain. And then that wire there is a bit of a pain. Tweezers are very useful things. assemble the top which is the opposite of what we did previously okay so we've got the top reattached now so we've got the screw in the end and the screw in there three screws on the top three screws on the bottom and uh, yeah I've taken off the uh, the battery test that has to go back on the rewind crank uh, the ASA selector and the film advance Okay, so here we can see the camera's been reassembled. We have the rewind crank put back on. Um, we have the ASA speed dial put back on. This winding part done. Um, I removed this. There's two screws that hold this part in because it's quite hard to align and keep this part in place as you're putting the top cover back on. So I removed it and then held the camera upside that way to reattach it. Let's just make sure that... Uh, Everything still works. Uh, battery test still illuminates, so that's good. Um, we can open the back like so. Frame counter is, is reset, so we haven't really changed anything there. Uh, we can wind on. Remember to listen for the click. There's the click, and uh, we can push down on this and we're getting a, a slow, so we're going to have a slow shutter speed, that's f16, uh, this is now at uh, f1.7, again still a slow shutter speed, oh it's on b that's why, it's on auto, so now we've got overexposure, this is on a thousand ASA admittedly, but we've still got overexposure, I'll bring it down to say 400 ASA. Still got a slow, slow speed. So I'll open it up a little bit. There we go. It's still saying slow. Still saying slow. I'll stick it back to say 640. No lights. So that's the zone that we want to be in. Remember, we wind on. There's the clunk. It's a little cover for the top of this. These are repeated inside the viewfinder, but they're a little bit out of adjustment. So when we do the um, the pad of destruction or the pad of death, we will uh, we'll, we'll re we will re look at this and try and get these arrows to be a bit more in the viewfinder. You can see them, but they're at the very top. It just needs to be realigned, really. Um, camera does have a self timer which is this button down here let's just check that that's working 
Uh, yeah, very quiet whirring, but it's moving. There we go. Very quiet shutter on these. Beautiful cameras, that's why I like them so much. Remote winding on, listening for the clunk. There's the clunk. The lock, that still works. Shutter button's in the right place. Press halfway down for metering. The cool way to take the picture. Focus nearing works fine. We've just got this on here to sort out. But that's a video for another day because I think this one's probably long enough. But there you go, folks. A sort of quick overview of a Yashica 35 Electro. This is the GSN version. Only real difference with the N is that you get a hot shoe and you get slightly higher ASA range on them. Beautiful cameras, very well made, and this one now is uh, almost in an operational state. I don't know what the, uh, the foams are like inside. It'd be nice to put a film through it because the lens is absolutely spotless. So, <laughs> it doesn't look too bad. It's not the worst I've seen, but it could certainly do with a new set, but I would imagine you could get away with a film in it. Like I say, I always put a bit of black tape on for the first, uh, well, for the rest of the roll. I'd normally take about five or six pictures with the tape off and then put black tape over it for the rest of the film and then you can see if there are any light leaks there. Yeah, very, very, very nice. And especially having the case, the cap, the strap, and it's in very nice condition apart from this punch on the nose that it's had. But the lens is uh, no fungus in there at all, no hazing. Slightly yellowy tint, but that's the coating on there because this is the colour yashin on. So it should be fine with colour film. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. There's another camera saved from the, the landfill or from sitting on someone's shelf. Nice to keep these things going. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Comments, questions, queries down below. And uh, don't forget to uh, like and um, subscribe and all that usual stuff that YouTube likes. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.